Jonathan Ginogli. Mr Deputy Speaker, this war must see Ukraine and its people emerge victorious. There are no plausible alternatives. But there is still a gap as to how to pay for Ukraine's reconstruction, both in the short term and when the war is won. There is no doubting that the West will do its part when it comes to it. To my mind, however, a question of fairness, or lack thereof, remains. It cannot be right for the burden of reconstruction to fall solely on the shoulders of Western taxpayers. This is especially the case due to estimates for it, for it being so astronomically high. Suggestions from the ground in Ukraine have been said that it will cost around $750 billion, and this figure will only continue to grow as Russian armed forces and mercenaries continue their indiscriminate destruction. The aggressor in this case, the Russian Federation, its political and military leadership, and yes, its people, must pay the price. The price, that is, for disregarding and in fact smashing the rules and norms of the post-1945 world order, which had guaranteed the peace in Europe for so long. What Russia started by invading Georgia in 2008, they continued in Crimea, Donbass and then wider Ukraine. So there must be no more free passes for Russia to invade, brutalise and plunder. To appease Putin would only encourage him to greater brutality. Our current freezing sanctions are robust, wide-ranging and necessary, but in light of Russia's barbarism, they do not go far enough. <coughs> there remains some debate as to the quantity of assets frozen here in the UK, but, but, and also uh, that's of the Russian state and also individuals, and we've had a discussion about that this evening. But regardless of the specific value of those frozen assets in the UK, it is clear that frozen assets worldwide could form the lion's share of future support to Ukraine, including for the vital reconstruction of people's homes and national infrastructure. Seizure, however, requires both political courage and will, and something that has been exhibited by our Canadian allies here. And I advise my right honourable friend from Chingford that the Canadians are doing more than talking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They are acting on it. Yeah. In June of last year, lawmakers in Ottawa empowered the relevant Canadian ministers to approach their Attorney General to apply to the court to forfeit assets for the benefit of Ukraine, assets that had already been frozen. The legislation does build in important safeguards to protect rights to property, including that any person who appears to have an interest in the frozen assets may be heard by the court. Nonetheless, seizures are now underway specifically in relation to an estimated $26 million held by Granite Capital Holdings, a company owned by the sanctioned oligarch Roman Abramovich. Discussions are, I understand, ongoing about how the proceeds should be used and distributed in Ukraine be that directly through the Ukrainian state or by using select NGOs. But the fact of seizure is now a legal reality in a friendly nation whose legal system is similar to our own. Conversations I've had with lawmakers in other allied nations, such as the US, indicate they are also considering how to make seizures legally viable and feasible in their own jurisdictions. And media reports suggest that this is also the case in capitals across the EU, such as Tallinn. We should be doing likewise here in the UK as well. Not to do so, I believe, risks us finding ourselves in the morally dubious political situation of handing back frozen assets to Russia and to sanctioned individuals. Or it could lead to individual national deals with sanctioned people which could put us out of lockstep with our allies. One of the many lessons of the last year since the renewed invasion is how important presenting a relentlessly united front to Russia is. On the day that we were privileged to welcome President Zelensky here for his outstanding address, the Prime Minister made positive and welcome comments about the necessity of asset seizures, as I note did the Leader of the Opposition. Now is the time to follow this up with firm action. As of today, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm confident in predicting that such, a such action would have the overwhelming support of this House. I think yeah. we've seen the cross-party support here today. Where there is political will, there is always a way, as our fellow Canadian parliamentarians have demonstrated. And I strongly welcome this debate and urge the government to set out a practical and effective plan for frozen Russian assets to be seized and repurposed to Ukraine's benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alison Phyllis. 